In this project, we want users to see a card with some prompt text on for whatever they want to learn, such as, what's the capital city of Scotland? When they tap it, we'll reveal the answer, which in this case, of course, Edinburgh. Now, a sensible place to start for most projects is to define the data model we want to work with. What does one card of information look like? And if you want to take the app further in the future, you can saw some interesting statistics around this, like number of times a card's been shown, and number of times a card was correct. But here, we're only going to store a string for the prompt and a string for the answer. To make our lives easier, we're also going to add an example card as a static property. So we have some test data for previewing and prototyping. So go ahead and press Command N, make a new Swift file. Call this thing card.swift, then press create. Inside here, I'll make a new struct called card that has two properties. One called prompt, which is a string, and one called answer, which is a string. Again, what an example value inside here. So I'll say we have static let example is a new card with a prompt being who played the 13th Doctor in Doctor Who. And so of course, if you're a big uh, Whovian, is Jodie Whittaker. Jodie with an I and two I's. Anyway. Boom. Now in terms of showing this thing in a Swifty Y view, we need something slightly more complicated here because yes, we want you know uh, two text tables showing one above the other, but we also want to have a nice white card behind them to bring our UI to life. Then add a touch of padding around it so the text won't go edge to edge of the card beside it. In Swift UI terms, this means a V stack for our two labels inside a Z stack with a white rounded rectangle. Now, I don't know if you use flashcards to learn before, but they've got a very particular shape that makes them wider than they are high. This makes sense if you think about it. You're only usually writing two or three lines of text. It's more natural to write long ways than short ways. Now, all our apps so far haven't really cared about device orientation, but we're gonna make this one work only in landscape. This gives us more room to draw our cards and it'll also work better once we have gestures later on. Now, fourth landscape mode, you wanna go to the target options, okay? That means go over pressing flash scylla, this blue icon at the top here, then choosing flash scylla under targets, here, and then these are our options. It's a whole bunch of uh, information here for us to work with, uh, and you can, if you want to, go to like the info tab and futz with it here, you'll see uh, support interface orientations is right here. Um, you can do it here, you can just basically delete the ones you, you don't want, just delete, in this case, portrait, uh, bottom, bottom home button like that. Um, there's also iPad if you want to change that as well. Um, or the general tab, you can actually just uncheck this box directly and get the same result. With that done though, we can take our first pass at a view to represent one card in our app. So go ahead and uh, as our current card, press Command N, make a Swift UI view, and call this thing card view, like so. This thing has to be told which card it's looking at. So I'll say the property here, let card be the current card it's looking at. And then of course, we'll pass that in for our preview. So I'll say down here, the card we're looking at is our example card. Now, in the view body, we'll say there's a Z stack first. And the background is a nice big rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 25. Nice and big as you can see. I'll fill this thing in a white color. So in the case it's currently invisible, but it does matter on other screens. And then over that I'll place a V stack. And this V stack has inside it, firstly, the card's prompt text in a nice large title font and a foreground style of dot black, which is the default for light mode stuff. But remember this thing could be in dark mode as well and we're rendering onto a white background, so we've got to say explicitly this is a nice black text no matter what. Then below in the V stack, I'll say we also have the card's answer text 
in a slightly smaller font. I'll say title this time, like so. And I'll give this thing a foreground style of secondary. So just slightly translucent like that. It's kind of grayish here. We'll add a little bit of padding around this thing. So 20 points in every edge. Can't go right to the very edge of the card. And give it a multi-line text alignment of center. So it aligns neatly like that. And then, as well as all this information, we're going to say, actually, our Z stack's got a precise size as well. Here, we'll say this thing has a frame width of 450, height of 250, like so. And it looks clipped in there as intentional. It'll be in landscape mode for a start. Uh, this sizing is no accident. The smallest iPhones have a landscape width of about 480 points. So this means our card is fully visible on all devices. So at this point, we've got our nice little card design here. You can see our, our, our card showing. You can't see it's a card because again, it's got this white background going on. Doesn't stand against the background of our view. This has become doubly problematic when we have a big stack of cards to work through. They'll all have white backgrounds and they'll kind of blend into each other on the screen. There's a simple fix for this. We can add a shadow to the rounded rectangle up here. So we get a gentle depth effect. This will help us right now, making our white cards stand out against the white background. But when we start adding more cards, it'll look even better. The shadows will add up and get stronger and stronger. So we'll add a modifier here below this fill white, we'll say the shadow with radius of 10 points. And now you can see our actual card there. You can see both the prompt and the answer at the same time, which isn't great, but the idea is sound. Obviously though, having both prompt and answer at the same time isn't gonna help anyone learn. And so to finish this step, we're gonna hide the answer label by default and toggle its visibility whenever the card is tapped. And so we're gonna add some new state to this view. We'll say at state, private var is showing answer is false. And now we can wrap our answer text in a condition checking that Boolean. We can say, if is showing answer, then do our answer text like that. And with that simple change, it means it'll now only show the answer when is showing answer is true. And the final step is to add an on tap gesture to our Z stack, which means going down and finding our frame here and adding an on tap gesture here. We'll do on tap gesture is showing answer dot toggle. So I tap on the card, just go ahead and show or hide the answer like that. Now, in this instance, using a tap gesture like this works better than a button because we're going to be adding dragging as well. So we have two gestures fighting at the same time and we can resolve that neatly with a gesture around the button. Don't worry, we'll make sure and fix up all the accessibility later on too. Now that's our card view done for the time being. So you want to see it in action, you can do. Just go ahead and go to content view over here and replace this default body code with just one card view with a card being our example card like that. And I'll press command R to run this code back. And you'll see straight away, the home indicator moves to the bottom, or sorry, left side here. The phone is now actually in landscape mode automatically. It will not be in portrait, only just landscape now like that, which is what we asked for. We turned off portrait mode, which is, which is great because it fits the card very nicely. And our default card appears, it's a good start.